Hi and welcome to another one of my Vintage i5 videos. In this video, hopefully you're going to get some tips and um, what happened to me when I bought an e a speaker off of eBay. Here's a quick picture of that. And I will be coming back to that shortly in the course of this video. Um, some experiment I did taking these apart. Uh, how important it is to make sure these screws are tight, especially on these sealed units. I'll come to that. Um, yeah, just some general tips and um, other bits and pieces really hopefully you'll pick up a few um, ideas or things you can do with your speaker maybe just to improve that sound a little bit better more than what it is make it a little bit better right anyway show you the first picture as you can see i've got the delta 90.2 on the floor decided to take it apart have a good look around um, so yeah in the second picture here you can see where the mid-range here has actually got its own seal pointing with the uh with it, if you know if you look through the big vector, which is the smaller circle out of the two you look at the yellow arrow there um, it actually shows you the you know the inside of its sealed unit and the yellow area below actually shows you looking through the base um, showing you that sealed unit which is like a hardboard kind of um, yeah like, like cardboard should I say quite an hard cardboard it goes from top to bottom and the uh, red arrow there even shows you where the uh, speaking wires go into that chamber and they're even like sealed off with like this kind of like um, blue tack kind of you know soft putty kind of thing to make sure no air gets out and the blue arrow there is pointing to the actual seal that they use around the uh, base speaker so that's that so um yeah so this is uh seen from the tweet looking down the tweeter the little tweeter roll there looking from that side you can see the uh the chamber there and this is inside the chamber now so that's what the chamber looks like it's got like its own uh kind of like soft material like wall kind of thing there to absorb the sounds uh, as you can see it's got its own gasket there all these speakers have their own gasket even the tweet has got its own gasket it's to keep the air air tight uh, as you can see number five there is the actual uh, tweeter gasket there and if we go to this picture here this is the, from the delta 70 speaker it's a, a slightly different gasket a bit more thicker than um, the gasket on this uh, delta 90 and uh, if I show you the also, also inside there is the crossover which is this picture here and this is the other side of the crossover and for anyone who's interested it's a quick diagram I did uh, track the diagram and here's the diagram of the Delta 90.2 uh, crossover this is the uh, diagram there I'm afraid I haven't got the values for the coils but the values for the uh, capacitors and resistors are correct uh, also it's important here, I took a picture of the rear, it's also important to make sure these screws, because this has got its own gasket, it's important that these screws are done up nice and tight as well, uh, so yeah, just bear that in mind. Now, if you're talking about keeping these tight, I've done a bit of experimenting and I did go through quite a bit with these speakers and it was quite really apparent on one rather than the other, but it's still there, it's to, and it's been covered in other videos as well, but make sure these screws, when you get them, they will come, they will come loose, because obviously these speakers are vibrating, Depending what's on the other side, some of these kind of got a metal shut, you know, going to a metal kind of like fixing. So they're going to be quite tight, but some of these just going to wood like this here. And over a period of time, the speaker vibrate and the old box vibrate and these will come loose. And I haven't bought a pair of speakers yet that I haven't actually had to tighten these up. It may only be quarter of a turn or half a turn and a few of them have been over like one, over one turn. But I've got to tighten these up. Like I can say, they've got their own gasket inside and they don't do all this for nothing. It does make a massive difference. It really does. I tried this and I tried this speaker. Now the difference of this speaker is not so apparent because air is escaping through the base port here. The air is going to escape anyway. Don't air tight you do these, air is going to escape. But it does make a difference. It's not so much as it does on here, but it will make a difference. Just make sure they're, they're nice and tight then. Um, especially like, not so much the tweeter, uh, even though I keep, obviously don't keep it loose, but it will, the bigger the speaker, the uh, more important it is. This is a sealed unit and it makes a much, much bigger difference. I mean, I've, I've loosened these just a tad, half a turn or something, three quarters of a turn. And you can hear the difference, like very slightly on this, but quite apparent on here, you can hear the difference. Like, you know what I mean? The sound's escaping and it's the wrong kind of sound escaping, so it's interfering with the sound you should be getting. This is, this is the point here, really. So make sure these are all really done nice and tight. And like I say, also on the rear, I mean, you see like this is um, a, a rear port, but um, it's obviously got the crossover obviously uh, stuck on the back of it as well. But they've all got gaskets on it. There's a gasket on there. And that's the reason that you know, they wouldn't bother putting a gasket on there if it won't have to be airtight. Also a thing, if you, if you do want to undo the speaker, if you did want to check the wiring behind, just in case, because over a period of time, it, it, don't, it, don't, it ain't happened to it. It's a couple of speakers it's been like, but not many. These connections will 
there you go. They, they clip on there. They will get loose or they may not have been put fully tight on the factory or you may get it and you, you get it. It's all wobbling about. So that needs tightening. And there's a couple of ways of doing it really. You could actually get a pair of pliers and you've got to be really careful and just push them together there then put it back on. Or if you can imagine the length of that, which is about half a centimetre, I suppose, is maybe just give that a little twist or bend it about a quarter of a centimetre, just at a slight angle. So when you push it on, it's just got a bit more of a grip there. Um, is that the right one? Yeah, and obviously make sure you put it back to which terminal you took it off of as well. But and if you are taking your speakers apart, obviously lay them down. Don't do them like this, because especially the base unit, it's just going to fall out and you'll be all over the place trying to grab hold of it. So lay it down, that's another thing to do. So, you know, it's up to you. You may not want to take it apart, but if you did, obviously make sure all these connections are really tight, screws are tight. Everything you could possibly tighten up is tight. So that's that. So yes, going back to that experiences on eBay, I'll just quickly cover this as well. Uh, also, just before I do that, about every year, especially on the bigger base, bigger base units, try and turn them around 180 degrees. So literally get the speaker, on the floor like I say take it out and just turn it around like that then put it back in because the gravity pulls the cone down which obviously makes a little bit of an impression on the coil it can do I'm not saying it always does but people do turn them around so just another little tip there um, yeah and when, when buying these speakers the thing to do is obviously go there and listen out for my, you know turn the treble up make sure the treble's coming out the uh, tweeter uh, you know, you're hearing like mid-range kind of voices, that like, no, voices like mid-range kind of stuff coming out of here. Put your ear against it, and the bass. You know, I mean, you can push these in and out like that. I don't know how far they go in. It probably depending bigger the speaker, obviously the further they go. But just a little push in and out, and you shouldn't hear any scratching or anything like that. It should be just quite a nice smooth movement going in and out. No, that kind of thing, where the coal or the speakers rubbing against something. So that should go out. You're not doing it any harm, just don't go mad. Just in and out gently on them as well, just to just to test that out. But anyway, I wanted to come to the eBay, buying off of eBay. Now I've had quite a mixed experience here of eBay. Obviously you can get some bargains if you go and pick them up. I mean, if you go and pick them up, you can see them, you can listen to them, and they're not going to get damaged, and you've got them, and you bring them home, all, you know, all nice. Like I've said, give them a good test, and you've got a good chance of giving a good test around the house. And don't be frightened to say, well, there's not really the speakers for me. You can change your mind, like, you know what I mean, you know, just, just give it a you know, it's, it's hard to tell straight away, because it really is, you have to bring them up and get them in your environment, and it takes a little while just to get the sound, and they can grow on you, like, you can, first of all, you could hear anything, that's oh, rubbish, but placement, and, and, you know, they can grow on you, like, you with me. Um, yeah, I've bought them off of eBay now, I bought, uh, must be about five pairs, and no word of a lie, five pairs, uh, and only two arrived, or well, three arrived. Um, the, the, let me just show you a video. This is the first pair I bought off of eBay. Um, these are monitor audio speakers, and um, they arrived, and they, when I first see them, I thought, well, they ain't too bad. I knew it was gonna be in rough condition. He said the cabinets are pretty rough, but I thought, I'll, I'll re do something to that. I've obviously got them cheaper because of that. Um, I thought I'd give them a go. Anyway, I, I connected you up to the amp, and I thought, the, the way, you know, everything sounded okay until I started, mucking. I don't usually do the bass now, but I, I do test it just to make sure it's okay. I'll turn the bass up on the amp to number five or 10, whatever it was on whatever amp, and it started making this farting sound. Uh, when boom, boom, but the fart was going with it. So I thought, oh, something's not quite right. Maybe the speakers can't handle it or something, but they're quite biggish speakers. So I was listening to it, and as you can see, with this just little clip here, you just see that clip. This is oh, looking around it, and it, I just thought, so is, is it coming? It looked like a slight gap in the speaker there. So I pulled it away with my finger, as you can see there. And um, yeah, it, the glue had come undone. So it just shows you. I mean, the person who sold it didn't know this. I don't think I would have noticed straight away if it didn't make the farting noise. Nothing, nothing, something I want to check. I want to come around and check and all the glue around all the uh, speakers and everything. But um, yeah, just something I noticed there. So. Um, I could have stuck it back down, but you know, I bought them, why should I be doing that? It's not that, I could muck it up or anything, you know, anything can happen, it may not go quite right or whatever. So I got in contact with a seller, and uh, he was saying, well, I've sent them out perfect, you know, it's unlucky, like kind of thing, that kind of attitude. And I had to get eBay involved, and eventually I had to send them back and get my money back. But obviously, these speakers weighed quite a lot, and uh, it was all right when it was coming, but I'd take them down to my local post office, and they weighed an absolute ton. I mean, I couldn't lift them, the pair. They you know, there's two in a box. I couldn't lift them. So me and my mate had to drag them down there. Got down there, a bit more aggro down there because it was too heavy for that post office to accept an eBay return. But uh, lucky enough, I used it quite regular and he kind of like waved it through eventually. 
and um, off they went and I, I eventually got my money back even when he got them he was reluctant to give me my money back like so I wait till eBay to actually step in and get them back saying I actually caused all this you know all this glue coming undone and whatever it was my fault but um, anyway just you know it's just a thing that can happen and I, the other pairs I've had um, two of them got lost um, I say they got lost, I think because they were so heavy and big that the delivery company uh, couldn't be bothered to get them off the lorry or load them up on the lorry. Uh, this is the kind of thing, because I had a, a thing called Click and Collect, eBay do a lot. Um, and they said that they'd been delivered to this firm, oh sorry, attempted delivery to this firm, like where I pick them up from, uh, the Click and Collect. But when I actually went to see the Click and Collect, they said, no, no one's ever arrived here with them, nothing. So, uh, and they wouldn't refuse them, you know what I mean? They wouldn't be attempted. I just think they're so heavy, they couldn't be bothered to get them off the back of the van. So, just a few, and obviously you've got more aggro again, trying to get your money back off of eBay. They've got to go through all their procedures and whatever, and it all takes time. So, if you can pick these up, you're going to buy them cheaper, you can have a good listen, you can have a good look. So, you know, it's, it's, it's much better, I think, if you can pick up, even if you have to travel 50, 100 mile, it, it could be really worth it. And obviously you're going to save the postage as well. So, you know, it works out cheaper speaker, cheaper postage, everything like, obviously you can do a little bit of petrol, but you can see exactly what you got. Anyway, I think I've covered everything there. Uh, like I say, that, that, that broken speaker, it don't happen all that often, I suppose, but you could get one where one of the units ain't working, you know, it may sound fine to the seller, and maybe the tweet has stopped working or something, because you can hear it, or tick, 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 but he's not realising one of them's missing kind of thing. So, um, yeah, just, you know, just some general tips there and a little look inside these speakers. I will do some more little look inside things and whatever, and um, some other videos very shortly. Anyway, until now, I'll say thanks for watching, and also please subscribe if you can, and that really helps the channel out and gets me motivated to do more stuff. Until next time, thanks very much.